Okay, how you guys doing today? My name is Curtis Nelson. I'm with Johnson Controls. And today we're gonna be training on the Simplex 4100 ES panel. And a little bit after this, we'll go over the smoke control panel that's out inside the building. So uh, this is the interface for uh, the 4100 ES. You have two panels. You have one right here and you also have one in the, the metal building. So we're just gonna kinda go over the couple functions on how to operate this. Uh, when you get trouble, supervisories and alarms, those will be the three basic functions that you'll have to deal with. So uh, first we'll start with the trouble. You can see that we have a trouble on the panel right now. Um, a trouble consists of usually your circuitry. So you either have an open circuit, a short circuit, or you have a problem with the device. Maybe a no answer. A supervisory it, uh, has to do with your tamper switches, which is for your fire risers and your OS and Ys. And you do have a couple PIVs outside uh, the metal building. So when those are activated, you'll have a supervisory. Uh, and then you have a fire alarm. So if anybody pulls a pull station or a smoke detector goes off, uh, it'll indicate a fire alarm. So you have three buttons that you'll typically use. Um, and then over here you have what are called bypasses. So anytime someone's doing maintenance on the system and you don't want to create a false alarm, evacuate the building, or have your HVAC system kick in or your doors drop, you're going to want to bypass these buttons or hit these buttons to bypass the system. So in order to do that, uh, you will have to put in a password. And the way you do that is you go to menu. So what you're going to do is you're going to hit menu. Uh, you're going to change access level. So you're going to hit enter. Log in. Log in at a uh, new access level. Hit enter. And your password is 333. So 333, three, three, enter. Access granted. And now you can go ahead and use these buttons. So I'll go ahead and press all three. Those will create a trouble in the system because it's indicating that there's an override. The way you silence this is you hit trouble acknowledge. So that will silence the panel. And now you can go ahead and work on your system and not worry about creating false alarms or setting the system off. So since I have these on, what I'm going to do is simulate a fire alarm real quick. That way you can kind of see what that looks like. So. so what I did was I pulled a pull station. Um, you're, it's enunciating that there's a fire alarm. Now typically there's going to be strobes and chimes going off and your HVAC units will be activating for smoke control. So what you would do if it's a false alarm you would come and hit fire alarm acknowledge. Then you would hit alarm silence. And what that will do is silence the, the chimes. And once the situation is fixed, you can go ahead and hit system reset. System reset in progress. takes a little bit to clear it. Okay, so you can see that the fire alarm is cleared and now you're you're good to go. So Sorry, we got a reoccurring troubles coming in. So once you're done uh, working on the system, you're going to want to go ahead and take the bypasses back off and that'll clear the panel for you. So it's also important to note that this system is monitored by a monitoring company. We call it the central station. So anytime you're gonna work on the system, you're gonna wanna call that company and put it on test and then come and put your bypasses on. That way the fire department doesn't get rolled out. 
So does everybody kind of understand that? You guys have any questions on how that works? So again, we have three different states, the fire alarm state, supervisory, and a trouble condition. And all three of those are controlled uh, through these push buttons. You have the number for the monitoring company? That yeah, it's, it's actually on the door. We just okay. took it off so everybody can see, but there is a door just like this that'll have the numbers on the inside. Who to call, let know we're testing. Yes, it'll give you the monitoring number, uh, your account number. So, and that's the way you'll put it on test. So that concludes uh, this portion of the system. Now we can head over to the smoke control panel and go over that. Uh, here we got two different panels. One is for the smoke control system. And as we kind of talked about earlier, uh, this isn't to be touched. This is strictly for firefighters in the case of a fire actually happens out here. So um, we're going to leave this panel strictly for them. Uh, you, down here, you do have an enunciator. You have four of these uh, total in this building. Uh, this is one of them. The other three will be in the control room. So the main control room, uh, which is kind of where we were just at where the main fire panel was. And housing unit one and housing unit two will both have one in the control room. So uh, with these, these enunciators, you can acknowledge troubles and you can reset. And so, um, one of the things we talked about earlier was a supervisory. You guys didn't get to see that. So these are your tamper switches, right? Your control valves, which have tamper switches on them. So if you activate one of these, it causes a supervisory signal. So that means someone has tampered with the valve, which you don't want to leave these closed because then you don't have fire protection. So if you're working on it, you know, silence it. The way you do that is you hit supervisory acknowledge. You can work on the system. Once it's cleared, you open that valve back up. Once you open this valve back up, that signal will clear. System normal. So if you do have a fire alarm event and you want to reset it and silence it from here, what you got to do is turn this key to the right. And that allows you to use these, the system reset button. So once you're done with that, you turn the key back to on. And that's it. There's not much to it. So it's just a couple basic functions. Done.